Welcome back. We now have a very interesting conversation whereby Sudipta Virapaneni, Director Deloitte, will be in conversation with Ankit Mehta, co-founder and chief executive officer at Idea Forge, on a very interesting topic titled Flying High, Innovating with Drone Technology. Sudipta, over to you. A very good morning and welcome to Ankit. Uh, really excited to be part of this uh, discussion with Ankit. Um, I'm Sudipta. I'm a director in the supply chain team of uh, Deloitte, but I also lead the Catalyst program, which is our startup ecosystem, uh, which is why I'm really excited to be speaking to him today. Um, so Ankit, uh, really the question around some of the recent happenings and the changes that are happening in this space, right? Um, I believe um, you know a lot of the streamlining has been done uh, in terms of the procedures, the approvals that are required. Um, so I, I go back to 2019 uh, when I did my 2018 actually when I did my first um, drone-based uh, stockpile estimation for a leading uh, you know st uh, steel manufacturer. And I was speaking to one of my veteran uh, colleague uh, who is an audit partner, and he told me how the stockpile estimations were done back in the day. Uh, from then to now, where they actually used to climb the stockpiles to measure, I think from then to now, and even in the last couple of years since the pandemic, right, uh, number of changes have happened. Uh, this, uh, this sector, which really is being called a sector, uh, didn't really exist uh, back in the day, right? And uh, some of the pioneers like you who have been, uh, you know, we should thank you for sticking along for so long uh, and really uh, seeing things through. Uh, so uh, really looking at it, and in terms of the you know the aspiration the government has and some of the you know the uh, events that have happened in the recent times, uh, India is being seen as a global hub for drones, right? Um, and you you will be sort of you know soon working around that space as well. Uh, so what what do you see your thoughts around that? How do you see things have panned out so far for you? And uh, where do you see some challenges, talent shortages, anything that you would want to highlight and probably foresee that uh, you know these are going to be coming up in the next few years. So I think, uh, you know, like you rightly said, uh, this is an industry which is, uh, you know, being looked as as the next wave of, um, you know, growth and opportunity and a tech that has the potential for disruption. Some people say that it has as much potential for disruption as web has had uh, on us. So, and I think while uh, some of that may be exaggerated, but to a large extent, uh, it's a tech space which has uh, sort of unlocked the uh, you know, realm of possibilities for a lot of people. But I think a lot of that remained in the potential bucket for a really long time. Reason being that we did not have a very good regulatory regime. We did not have a very open uh, policy and uh, drones were a good to have product. They weren't a must have product, which sort of people could not do without. So I think the pandemic really changed the course of the entire industry. And uh, when the pandemic happened and we realized that, you know, it's actually risky to even send our forces to enforce lockdowns, then it started becoming apparent to everyone that unless we allow and enable this technology, we're not going to get a move forward or even a handle on this uh, situation in that one sense. So that's when exemptions started coming in on the regulatory front. And once the exemptions started coming in, one started to realize that, uh, you know, you can actually accelerate the pace at which growth is happening, development is happening in so many aspects and so many areas in this area. In this technology so they started working on a scheme called the swamitwa scheme where they are going to map all the 660,000 villages in the country using drones and our drones have particularly done a lot of service in that area as well over the last uh, year and a half so i think uh, you know the pandemic really changed the color of the industry and then on top of that we had incursions on our northern border plus we saw the global wars that uh, completely changed the color of how people imagine their life uh, to be if they don't have drones. Now there is a fear that if you don't have drones, there is a high likelihood that you'll lose the next war, right? And uh, that's probably one of the reasons why uh, you see a resurgence of the area. You see that the entire policy framework has been aligned and made very, very simple in that process. Now, the way I look at it is that <clears throat> presently we are in the phase of implementing the rules that have come and they've made life easier, they've made it simpler. Now, flying a drone is almost equivalent to taking a uh, car out on the road. You need a street legal car, you need a driving license, you need a license plate, which is exactly what you need in drones. You need a type certified drone, you need a license plate, which is a UIN, and you need a 
certificate to fly the drone so i think uh, with that level of simplicity the onus is on getting through the type certifications for most of the oems the onus is on all the a large pilot ecosystem to get created as well as uh, you know ui and delivery is i think it's a no brainer now it's something which is very easily tech enabled by the government already so i think with these two areas where we have a large uh, spray of pilots uh, working ready for deployment as well as we're looking at type certifications in the key areas we are all solving for in the industry there is not much regulatory wise on that perspective which is pending plus we also enforced a import ban which is essentially more like creating a level playing field on for the industry because what was happening was that india is signatory to a lot of export control regimes whereas there are certain countries who are not signatories to those regimes so we are at a disadvantage as vis-a-vis -vis those countries and those countries have you know in a way taken over the market and any country which has a lot of export restrictions has any you know has sort of remained a little bit less at an advantage as compared to the countries that have not signed those arrangements so we see that for the first time the government has taken notice of that and it put a import ban and then we also got the incentivization on the pli side so broadly i think the regulations have uh, made a very very great environment for us but i think one area where there is work to be done and it is being done actively which is the area of exports regime because our export regime has been extremely stringent and unpredictable so i think a lot of uh, work and effort is being put actively to try and make it more export friendly as well as to make it more predictable because that's the biggest uh, requirement at this point in time if you want to really become the drone hub of the world we need to have the ability to have a more predictable process of shipping these systems globally and be able to leverage the global scale and not just depend on the scale india is going to get us absolutely remarkable uh, i think steps that have been taken especially from the regulator standpoint right and i remember when we were doing our first few engagements uh, we had to go to the you know the police uh, stations and you know various authorities to get approvals mm -hmm. but i believe that all has changed in the last few years and uh, you need nothing in green yeah. zones yeah yeah yes absolutely sky is the limit as long as you are not in the red zone yeah exactly. that, that's how it looks like yeah. absolutely yeah and you briefly touched upon the pli scheme and i think that has been a remarkable step towards uh, you know uh, boosting the drone uh, manufacturing itself and you being one of the beneficiaries for the program going ahead uh, maybe how do you see uh, this manufacturing area sort of panning out for you you've been on both product side as well as the services uh, there is a lot of thrust around uh, the investments that are going to come in the the jobs that will be created Uh, so your views around uh, you know boosting the manufacturing you you sort of look at um, you know doing things very differently uh, than what the manufacturing is being done currently uh, leveraging some ipod auto technologies uh, is that how you are sort of looking at it right now so if you look at it pli scheme is a very interesting scheme it's sort of giving 20% of the uh, capital that you invested beyond the bill of materials or the product into doing r&d it's giving the 20% of what you are going to earn back in your hands as an incentive to do more r&d which means that we will see a lot of indigenization happening uh, we will see a lot of incentive in putting more money as far as research is concerned and building ip in india i think the imperative in the entire environment is going to be for us to be a drone hub we need to truly have technology that we own and is differentiated from the rest of the world we cannot hope to be a drone hub of the world by just being china plus one as far as manufacturing is concerned right i mean that's the way we will not be able to scale because without intellectual property there is no incentive to switch i mean a lot of these a lot of indigenization has to happen on a bunch of dumb components like the motors the aero structure and some of these things they are dumb components they are not really there is no digital data being uh, you know carried by these devices but uh, these dumb components if they have to be indigenized we cannot have a narrative that we just want to do whatever they were doing here and uh, you know basically earn even lesser margins because their economies of scale are very different than ours so we are only going to earn lesser margins if we do that so i think the pli scheme is an incentive to go deeper to create genuinely differentiated technology and whatever value you create out of that the government is saying that the more value you create the more you will get in your hands to reinvest in that uh, value creation so it's very interesting in terms of how this is going to pan out in fact 
I am aware that at least two or three of our own vendors are actually going to get PLI uh, this year, which means that they are further incentivized to either pass on that benefit to us or buy us to the end customer, or they will, uh, you know, invest in their capability of building a lot more. So I do expect uh, more effort towards building differentiated stuff than uh, just merely putting assembly lines or fabrication lines or production lines of various components that are available dime a dozen from elsewhere in the world. Absolutely. I think uh, you, you hit the right spot, uh, especially looking at the scale, right? Some of the Chinese operators that we have, um, you know, uh, the, the, the cost equities are available to us. So definitely one is to cater to the India market, which is where a lot of demand is there. And I mean, we, in pandemic, we have seen it was like a uh, you know blessing in disguise for us. Uh, the sector, uh, you know, the, uh, the the sector needed uh, we needed the sector more than the sector needed us uh, in terms of the application that we saw during the pandemic. Uh, but also to look at scale and looking at uh, exports uh, in this area that will be sort of critical for us going forward as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the third question I have for you, um, Ankit, is that I think this space has really opened up, right? In the last couple of years, especially uh, since the PLI scheme and some of the forms in the regulatory uh, aspects getting streamlined and simplified, uh, this space has opened up. Uh, you have some, uh, you know, com uh, co companies from Israel and others which are investing in India in this space, right? And you have uh, some of the giants, if I call it, uh, the uh, Reliance and the Adanis, also looking at this area. And then at the same time, we have mid-tier companies, we have small startups who are, uh, you know, enthusiastic of this uh, from both product and uh, services standpoint. Uh, so how do you see this going forward? Uh, how do you look at balancing, you know, some of the companies uh, sort of getting acquired or being invested in? Uh, how do you see that this is a level playing field for everyone to sort of, you know, be around? So, you know, we have been, so we've been around for last 15 years and we've been actually delivering drones, competing with pretty much all the players globally since the last uh, 12 years in this space. And in our experience, merely investing in a space has never been enough. Uh, merely investing in this space has never been enough. I think it's a space where to build technology that is able to reliably deliver results to build technology that is able to differentiate itself from the crowd and to build technology that is uh, you know beyond the obvious where you actually make some money in the process rather than you know being compared with the uh, lowest available uh, you know off the shelf product and then you basically are working on razor thin margin so i think differentiation building is the key in this space and if you are a differentiated technology I think there is enough room in this market for that technology to exist because there is in this market, we do not expect a one size fits all because the problem is that uh, every use case will have a certain depth at which it will be difficult for a run of the mill product, which is meant for 20 use cases to deliver that differentiated outcome. Because when you're pushing the boundary, you have to push boundaries specifically for a use case and deliver that result. And therefore, we have seen that, for example, despite the fact that you have the largest players available in the gray market in the India, in the country, like the DJIs of the world, even then we are very, very clear that our products offer almost 40 to 50% better TCO than those products. Because eventually it's not about the price of acquisition. It is about what is it that somebody will bear as a cost trying to operationalize the system at scale. So we have seen that, uh, you know, there is there is a way to create a differentiated offering. There is a way to create a niche for yourself in the space. Number two is that when these large investors invest, uh, their investments are not coming from a deeply technical motivation or deeply, uh, you know, it is more a sectoral motivation in that broad sense. Ki I need to be in the sector. So, you know, my experience has been that uh, it is not necessarily that by acquiring people have pushed the boundaries of technology. They have largely tried to build to print. And when you're building to print, you are essentially, uh, you know, compromising on differentiation and uh, automation and a lot of uh, those areas that will put you ahead of the crowd. You're sort of trying to meet the mass market. And the only weapon you have there is essentially cost uh, in the end, which really isn't, uh, you know, beneficial for 
them or the industry in that broad sense because there is no sales happening on the value that that is being created for the product in the market so i think uh, there is lesser patience lesser understanding with a lot of these large conglomerates uh, acquiring these companies because they aren't necessarily uh, you know gunning for differentiation they are just gunning for presence at this point in time and i feel that uh, ultimately what will scale is uh, you know differentiation because uh, when you differentiate you are able to give more value to that specific niche use case and therefore uh, you know you are more adaptive and more adaptable so i do not see them as a threat i see them as a means of increasing the awareness in the ecosystem and when the evaluation happens on specific tech areas i think people who are doing genuinely differentiated technology and building uh, you know products that truly deliver value to the end customer are the ones that are going to survive they may come from anybody they may come from the large conglomerates they may come from the uh, startup that has just realized that you know nobody is really solving the customer's problem and therefore i need to go and solve the customer's problem no absolutely i think ankit uh, you hit the right spot um, i think uh, each of these are differentiated use cases whether you are looking at oil and gas you are looking at defense agri they are very different uh, use cases and it's it's while it is all under the drone umbrella i think uh, the the problem that you are tackling is very different right yes uh, so where one one side you are looking at uh, infestation and identifying what is the right solution on the other hand probably you are looking for leakage in pipelines right so, so very different use cases and that's where the product plus the bundling with the services uh, would be critical uh, and you know uh, each each company and I, the message i get is that there is enough space uh, for everyone to play in this uh, ground uh, massively so, massively abs- yeah absolutely i think this has been a great conversation short and uh, sweet i would say uh, but really excited for this space and uh, really looking forward for you to scale in this and uh, you know taking uh, india to greater heights and flying really high thank you so much i think this space really uh, is the future that uh, we can look up to in terms of uh, inducting this technology in our overall you know daily lives in some form or yeah. fashion and i hope that uh, in india we do the right things and we build a ecosystem that is complementary to each other is collaborative and is able to not just compete at the local level we, we are not busy just you know competing with each other we have to build solutions together that actually compete with the rest of the world i think that's how we will be able to gain an advantage in the market and i hope that we can build an ecosystem of that nature and that kinds absolutely or leaving that on a positive note i think uh, things are looking really uh, great for us uh, i thank you for giving this time and also to economic times uh, for giving us this conversation opportunity to converse as well thank you thank you well you're absolutely right sudipta we wish ankit the very best uh, in taking india to greater heights and to fly really high we wish you ankit and idea forge the very best going forward and sudipta thank you for doing a fantastic job of moderating this session ladies and gentlemen i would like to take this opportunity once again to thank sugarbox networks for collaborating with us as our associate partner at this summit this summit is brought to you by et edge and et unwired do join the conversation on twitter and other social media platforms and share your thoughts views and experiences using the hashtag #etgdi summit for details on the agenda of the summit please click on the agenda tab and for an enhanced viewing experience kindly click the full screen button of your player do stay tuned in we will be back on the other side with the next session